Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. And I'm starting a series of videos today. I don't know, it'll be four or five or whatever the market will bear. That is, if people watch it, otherwise I'll discontinue the series. But the whole gist of it is that I am beginning a project where I need to do some dividing on the lathe. So recently you saw me purchase this lathe dividing head by the Master Manufacturing Company, but only one index plate came with it. I suspect that there should have been three or four in all, but I do not have them. I don't know what ever happened to them. So I'm going to show you how to make index plates and this has been covered by uh, Keith Rucker very well, but I'm going to take it a couple steps farther. And in this series of videos, I'm going to show you at least four different ways of, uh, of making these plates. And I need a plate for this lathe dividing head that will uh, divide a circle into 25 parts, and the plate that's on there will not do it. So what uh, I'm going to do in this very first video here in just a few minutes I need to go down to the high school and have the boys on the CNC uh, plasma cutter, which they call a torch mate, cut out some circles for me. Now, I could do it on the bandsaw, but it's so much easier if someone does that for me. I guess I'm getting lazy, but it's interesting to see it. I think you'll enjoy the footage of that, and these, uh, these kids were real swell to me. And Mr. Taylor also gave me a and you met him before, uh, an open invitation for any materials that I might not need for these projects. So he's interested in what I do. Remember, he's the teacher that inspired the kids to do the iron making, and that's shown in one of my videos. So let's go on down to the high school and uh, see what's happening, okay? I'm here at the high school, and we are preparing to cut some circles like this out of 3 16 stock of various sizes. And I've got Riley here at the computer doing the artwork. Well,
And now, just before the bell rings, we're going to cut a 12 and a half inch or 12 and a quarter inch out a quarter inch plate for a turntable. This is a slightly different project. Thank, thank you guys. Now if you got to run to class, why? And thank you, Mr. Taylor, for allowing me to come in. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, you've all met Mr. Taylor before when he made iron. <laughs> and there it is. And there's the bell, just in time. Thank you, gentlemen, for helping him out with that. Well, there's the waste stock. The bell rang. It's quiet in here. There's no students in here for the moment. And you'll see me machining and making a dividing head index plates out of these, and that's the Lazy Susan. I'll make that a separate project later on. Several people asked about that. Now, this all could have been done on a bandsaw, you know, but it would take forever. Here at the high school, they have a Bailey bandsaw, and these could have been cut on a bandsaw with a narrow enough blade, but that's a, believe a, that's a half inch blade on there, so it's a real fight to, to cut small circles on a bandsaw without making relief cuts or having a very narrow blade. And then you tend to break the blades and need to use the blade welder. About eight or ten years ago, I bought this Wilton bandsaw for the school, and it's still here and in good shape. Remember, this is the, one of the rooms that I taught in when I was part-time. So it's nicely equipped, a lot of changes made since I worked here. I hope to make a video of this press brake someday. It's in a booth with a safety curtain. I think it'll be interesting for you to see that. I thank those boys for helping me. Riley and Cody, I believe are their names. Well, that was a zero hour class and it's still not even eight o'clock. So I'm gonna go home and have breakfast and get started on this project. Okay, I'm back from the high school and I hope you enjoyed the footage with uh, Riley and Cody. And they were good kids, weren't they? And uh, here's what I gave them. I, I made some little patterns, actual size, you know, and I said, Riley, this is what I want. Uh, two or three of these at three and a half diameter. And that's the radius and the thickness and a three quarter hole in the center. And similarly on the two others. So I got three different sizes here all together and there's some different thicknesses. And to start with in the first video I'm going to make a, a plate, a dividing plate for this dividing head. But in a later videos in this series this is the hardinge dividing head and these plates are different diameters. I don't really need plates for this. I have four plates. I have all the plates that are supposed to come with it. Notice that these are quarter inch thick. This is only three sixteenths thick. But I'm going to make some just to show you the different ways of making them. I plan on using a rotary table and a simple transfer method and a coordinate method and, and maybe using the index head to make uh, index plates. So who knows? Depends, as I said, will uh, people actually uh, watch these videos. But it's going to be interesting for me to do it. <laughs> anyway, I'm kind of excited about it. 
And some of you are probably saying, where's your big Cincinnati dividing head? And I'll have to tell you, and it only required one plate. Why? Because the plate was so large in diameter and it was reversible because it was quite thick. Well, that dividing head was wonderful. Just an absolute beauty and there are a few videos on that. But the thing weighed 150 pounds and I couldn't move it. Matter of fact, I could scarcely move my half of it if my grandson was helping me. So I did sell it to my buddy Dale. So it's down in uh, well, central Illinois someplace. So. I might go visit it sometime. Well, that concludes this video. Now, in the next video, I will be making a plate for this master dividing head. A couple different methods, and then we'll move on to the hardened. So, bear with me on that. Hope you enjoy it. But this is a good way to start, and these will be cleaned up, and the slag will come off very easily. And these must, of course, be turned down to a certain diameter and bored to one and a quarter so they will fit on this. So that's just rough uh, cut with the plasma cutter. Well, I hope it's not too hard when I go to bore that. All right. See you next time. Thanks for watching. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.